Thank you. And thanks for being invited. I'm, I'm really nervous, so please forgive me for any, any shaking mistakes I make. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm talking about some EU country policies, so I focused on five countries. Um, and just as a quick introduction, I know you all know it, but it's like flu is underestimated, and to every person I talk to which is not familiar with it, it's basically thinking, okay, it's cold. You know, we, we don't need anything to do anything about it. But there are the numbers to prove that flu is more severe than, than people think. And vaccination, vaccination even though it always has to um, be rebuilt, is the most effective way of prevention. So the objectives of the study were to um, find the communication strategies in a few member states, where I chose Austria, Germany, Ireland, Malta, and the UK, um, and to look at the EU itself. And um, then I wanted to shed light on the coherence of political recommendations and actions that are taken in this country, which, um, where I really focused on the governmental sides of um, actions taking, and then to look at the research gaps and find recommendations. So to the methods, just really quickly, I had two parts where I had the policy research to identify recommendations and the payment mechanisms and the quantitative content analysis where I also included message framing to explore the communications used. Uh, to the findings, um, Austria had the most recommendations in place, really strong for every, um, every population group. So not only risk groups, but also for healthy adults. Malta had the least, with um, only for two risk groups really having recommendations in place. However, payment mechanisms have been quite differently, as all countries somehow had payment mechanisms in place that um, people would fully get reimbursed or would have um, get paid the, the flu vaccination. Um, only Austria had or has in place that you have to pay out of pocket. Um, except for the healthcare professionals who um, are, or get, the, get the vaccination paid um, by the employer. To the communication, so what I found was that the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control um, offers a communi uh, communication toolkit where they do offer materials, but also some explanations on what you have to think about, what you, what you should look at um, when you develop a strategy with many questions about payment recommendations, um, what is the policy like. Um, only the UK offers a guide to campaigns and um, has really, uh, really in-depth communication yeah, strategies going on, um, as well as they have very elaborate um, materials they offer. Germany and Ireland also offer quite some materials which are openly accessible to everyone. Um, Again, Malta and Austria um, do not offer any communications. They, um, it's, it's rather giving some small information on the governmental website if you really, really deep look for it. But who does that if like, you're just a bit interested? Um, additionally, what I wanted to name here is the um, ad framework, which stands for Assess, Do and Describe. It's um, an ad uh, a framework which is or should be a guide to create and improve effective health communication. So this should definitely be named um, if you want to develop a strategy um, and import or like a, an effective health communication strategy. Um, just a quick um, pie chart to the message frames that were used. As you can see, basically, the um, basic information frame was used most often. Um, and just also to some part, the socio-economical political frame was used where it was most important to have the moral obligation to get vaccinated. So that was the most important part in the socio-economic and political frame. Um, to the discussion, so um, what, what I found was that recommendations, payment mechanisms and the communications that were taken were mostly coherent, well, especially in the UK and also partly in Germany and Ireland. However, but not for, like, not for Malta and Austria. And Austria was a specific case that they had the strongest recommendations to, um, to get um, vaccinated for every person, really, and had really, really strong um, language, actually, in getting vaccinated. However, they didn't show that with the payment mechanisms. And as, 
it was out of pocket payment and they didn't have any communications, which is quite diverse message they send out. Um, other, you have, or what, what should be noted is that mainly safe channels have been used, so one-way communication. There I want to point out two things. One point is that mainly channels have been provided as communications, but not really strategies. So it was that, yeah, we have communication strategies, but they were only materials, so you only gave posters and um, some leaflets, and that was it. On the other hand, um, this could, the one-way communication, I mean, when you have a two-way communication, you give people the platform to actually react on something, to ask questions with a good thing. But you would also offer anti-vaccination movement a platform where they um, could tell stories with, which maybe would have the, even the adverse effect of what you wanted to reach. Um, lastly, it's the use of frames, because what was shown is that mas uh, mainly basic information was given. But in a different study, it came up that only information or that you give, the more information you give, even though the acceptance raises of, of um, vaccination, the willingness decreases. So basic information alone can't be enough. There should be different frames. And what was interesting is that I was looking at five frames um, and the personal stories frame, which I also looked at, didn't come up once. So nobody actually, no message was a personal story which I also thought this should, should be named as personal stories. We also heard that in the other um, presentations before are quite powerful. So to my conclusion, well, full strategies are needed. It's not only having posters and it's not only giving like some, some small uh, insights, but uh, really full strategies would ha which have to be thought through. And that also counts for the communications. They have been, yeah, they have been really, or have to be really well planned. They have to be evidence-based. They have to be targeted to the population you want to reach. So it has also to do with the cultural set setting. And as Professor Sachs already said, um, <laughs> if they're not well placed, they can do more harm than good. So, Lastly, to my recommendations, what is important to look at is the coherence of the recommendations, payment mechanisms, and communications, because otherwise it can be, okay, my, my government said, I, I really have to get these, um, these flu jabs, but as it's not paying, it can't be that important to them, can it? So this, if there's something going on that should point in the same direction and not give like the, at the really contrary um, meaning or message, so this should be coherent, and when developing a communication strategy, um, it should be done or could be done with the guidance of the ECDC communication toolkit, um, as well as the YET framework, which gives really good help in, in what you have to think of in uh, case of time, in case of population group, in case of culture, in case of how the message, messages should be framed. So all these points uh, people should think of are already clustered in um, really short guides so can be really helpful to develop strategies. Thank you. <laughs>